they were shaking the door and like grabbing the handle. That was so scary. Everyone was gone. They must have known like that's not a good place to camp or something. We're Lloyd and Mandy, a Canadian Aussie couple that quit our jobs, sold everything we had to travel the world full time. We're currently traveling North America in our RV, and today we find ourselves in Northern California, home to the magnificent redwoods, rugged coastline, and the one and only Bigfoot. What's that? We've been on the road all day. It's seven o'clock now. <laughs> we left at like 11. Yeah. Made it. We're officially in the redwoods and it's so beautiful. Hey, look how big the tree is. Look at it. Does it look huge? Yeah. All right, we're just doing a drive through the Redwoods at the moment. We're on the road, Avenue of the Giants. It's even more stunning than I remember it being. We've been here once before about eight years ago. It's more magnificent than I remember. The trees are huge. I can't get over it. The width of them is like twice the size of the RV, which is massive. Look at this tree right here. tiny in here. Yeah. So beautiful. Bigfoot's from? Yeah, they had a, a year and a half ago there was a sighting about a mile back. A cop from Santa Cruz swears. Really? He saw when he called the hotline, got on the website. A cop? Yeah, it? from Santa Cruz. Really? He might have been smoking the weed, I don't know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's, he's a hide and seek champion of the world for a reason. Yeah. What do you think, is this one? Oh, there's a lot more. We had a guy in here just now who showed us a bunch of pictures of one. Really? And it looked real. I mean, it looked really real. He's, in fact, he's going to be speaking at Humboldt State University about it. He really? spent like six hundred dollars here buying a bunch of Bigfoot stuff for the seminar. Seminar is going to have. So they, I think they legitimately believe in Bigfoot around here. The guy said there was a sighting about a year and a half ago. A cop from Santa Cruz saw Bigfoot, called it in, and everything. No evidence. But then he said a guy was just in there before us, and he had photos that looked legit. And he's doing a seminar at Humboldt. State University. A little update on the fridge situation. It's getting pretty full, isn't it? It's getting there. Um, maybe do you like sliding in Yeah, that.
feel? So amazing. I think what's incredible as well is that like this whole business and all these people's jobs and everything is here just because of this tree's here. Like yeah. there's a gas station there, a gift shop, restaurant, cafe, a hundred people working here just because there's a tree here. <laughs> We're just going to give a quick shout out to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. One thing that we don't really show a lot of on this channel is all the behind the scenes stuff like uploading videos, editing, and of course all the planning that goes into our trips. So up until a couple of weeks ago, we didn't have our own Wi-Fi, so we were going to like public libraries, co-working spaces, coffee shops, basically anywhere we could find that had Wi-Fi to use. And that means we're logging into public Wi-Fi. The problem with that is public Wi-Fi is an absolute gold mine for hackers, which is why for over a year now, we've been using Surfshark VPN. And if you don't know what VPN stands for, it's Virtual Private Network. Basically, it acts like kind of a mask encrypting all of our data that goes from our computer to the internet. So nobody can jump on and steal all of our private information. But that's just one reason that we use Surfshark. The other reason is that it lets us connect to servers from all over the world, which means we can access streaming sites like Hulu, HBO and Netflix and lets us watch shows that we wouldn't usually be able to access from overseas. If you don't already have a Surfshark account, go and check them out. We'll leave the link down below and don't forget to use code Lloyd and Mandy at checkout to get an exclusive deal of three months for free. All right, we just woke up and came about an hour north of where we just were in the Redwoods. We're in a little town called Arcata. It's actually the hippie capital of the United States. It's a really neat little town. Uh, we've got a little bit of running around to do today, but we're gonna do some sightseeing in Arcata, then hopefully find somewhere to sleep around here tonight. <laughs> So far today has pretty much just been running around doing errands. We're now in Eureka, which is about 10 minutes south of Arcata where we just were. The bookstore in Arcata was shut and we both need a new book today. So we're here in Eureka, both gonna get a new book. And then we're gonna head to the beach, which I'm really excited for because it looks really beautiful.
All right, we found a pretty good spot here on the beach. We're thinking about spending the night. Um, all of the state parks around here are full. Uh, we just drove around and checked them out. It's getting to be that busy time of year. It's like almost July 4th weekend, so it's getting harder and harder to find campsites. And um, yeah, this is, a, this is a state park we're at this beach, but it's not a campground. But we don't see any signs anywhere. And there's some other vans here as well, which tells me that there's probably like a few people camping here and maybe it's not a big deal. You know, if we get a knock on the door, then we get a knock and we'll just have to find somewhere else. But it's a pretty good spot. Like bear can swim. It's pretty peaceful. It doesn't seem like very sketchy. Um, the only thing is there's not really any lights around, which is good for sleeping, but it's not the best for safety. But I think we'll be all right. We're gonna give it a go. Um, worst case scenario, maybe we'll get told to move on after sunset, but we're going to see how we go tonight. I'm thinking we just stay here, what do you reckon? Yeah. There's not really anyone around. Is there any signs saying we can? I couldn't see any, I just went for a walk. Um, there's a couple of other bands as well. Yeah. I like it. The view's amazing. Yeah, the view's beautiful. good. Bear yeah. loves it. So cozy. Can't wait to read my book like a big toasty cinnamon roll. <laughs> I don't know how to read the cover of this. Is it good vibes, good life? I don't know either. It's weird. How self love is key to unlocking your greatness. I'm excited to read that one. And this one, Rick Rubin's new book. Or is it new? I don't know. Rick Rubin's book. <laughs> I got Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> there wasn't a big selection, but I think this would be good. We've decided lately we like reading before bed instead of just watching movies and stuff. Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly what just happened, but um, we were just at the beach sleeping. Uh, it's like, what time is it? Two o'clock or something? Yeah, about two. I don't know for sure, but it sounded like somebody was just trying to break into the RV. They were shaking the door and like grabbing the handle. I thought I was dreaming and I heard it and then I woke up and I heard it again and I thought maybe it was Bear doing something. Like sometimes he makes noises in the middle of the night and then Bear started going mental. Like he started barking like really hard and I'm pretty sure I heard somebody run off and I waited. Bear was like going ballistic and I um, just waited, opened the blinds, couldn't see anything. There was two vans near us. Um, when we're eating dinner and then we went to bed. I don't know what happened to the two vans, but they weren't there anymore. So it was just us and I waited like five minutes, went outside, had a look around, like there was no one around. But where we were parked on the beach was like these big sand dunes all along the beach. So I don't know if somebody ran down there or I have no idea. Like I'm like shaking still. We just left the beach and came to this rest stop on the highway. Yeah, I guess, I don't know, what do we do? You all right? I'm so tired. That was so scary. I like had my earplugs in and it sounded like it was you, in my dream. Yeah. You, I don't usually wake up to things. You don't wake up to anything. I moved the RV the other night and Mandy didn't even wake up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that so shows how hard he was trying to oh here she was trying to open it yeah after oh, I'm shaking after that I just was like no nah, there's no way we're staying at the beach on our own everyone was gone they must have known like that's not a good place to camp or something <laughs> I'm so tired 
Uh, but we're at a truck stop, like a rest stop now on the highway, because I started heading north, but like it's two in the morning. I'm not going looking for a campsite. So we just pulled into the first rest stop and there's like a bunch of other cars. There's a couple of trucks. There's heaps of light here. So I think it's fine here, but thank you all we have bear, huh? Yeah, oh my God. Thank you, bear. And the pepper spray. All right, we found a really cool campsite here. We headed about an hour north outside Crescent City and we got this campsite for the next week actually, which is really good because 4th of July is coming up. I noticed a little loophole. All the state parks are booked out because you can reserve them in advance. The county parks are first come first served. So because it was a weekday, we got this spot and we just booked it for the maximum seven days, which means we don't have to find somewhere else to camp. I also was thinking about what happened last night at the beach and why somebody would do that. Did they think there was nobody there? Were they just opportunists? And I realized, and I'm not proud of this, but we left our camera on the dashboard here. Our camera was just sitting there. So maybe somebody came by and saw the camera also, another thing, the door here, which was locked, but if you look at it, even when it's locked, it sits like that sometimes. It doesn't really, like that's locked right now, but it doesn't fully close. Bear's going mental now. He heard the noise again. But our camera sitting on the dash there, the door looking like it might have been open. I think somebody just walked past and was like, I'm just gonna try it. And then when they tried to open it and realized it was locked, I tried again. And that's when Bear started going crazy and they probably just got scared off. So that's my theory. I don't think it was somebody like trying to hurt us or whatever. I don't know what would have happened if it wasn't locked and they opened it. That would have been a scary situation. Yeah.